Good evening. Welcome to the March 30th, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. Join me for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any public comment out there this evening? Mr. Rainier? <laughs> Jump right in, right at the beginning here. <coughs> what you're ready at 29 Highland Ave. Uh, I'm just here tonight to try and put forth a couple things. As you know, or most of you know, Highland Ave is at the south end of the beach. Oh, north end of the beach, I'm sorry. And basically, it's an extension of Route 101. I mean, as you drive uh, in over the bridge uh, or across the, uh, the marshland, uh, the State Highway ends right at Brown Ave, and then it begun, begins as Highland Ave. And I'll tell you, one of the joys that I've always had of living here at this end of the beach is driving over when I run. Not necessarily on the 4th of July, but uh, on any days where you drive along that area, and you can kind of look off to the south, and you can see beyond the uh, uh, Seabrook Nuclear Station, you know, way as, <laughs> as far as you can see. You look to the north and you uh, look across the, the wetlands on, and all up to Winnicott Grove, and straight ahead is on the horizon is the is the beach, and it, it, it's kind of a, a nice area. Uh, you know, you can watch that sun come up over the horizon, but that's kind of changing. Uh, if any of you have gone over there recently, this is what you'll see. What you see there is some construction that is being conducted now by Unitil. On uh, up to October 2014, uh, Unitil approached the Conservation Commission and asked their input and asked for their approval to uh, impact the wetlands in building or installing 36 posts, permanent posts, along that three-quarter of a mile sta or a stretch, mm -hmm. to string wires to the distribution substation on Church Street. <coughs> and on November of 2014, that application was approved by the planning board. So I just wanted to research that whole thing a little, little further, uh, just to see how the, this whole thing came about. And I went to the planning board, and I asked to see the whole file of the application process. And it's pretty extensive. I mean, the, uh, especially the uh, responses that uh, the unit had to uh, respond to the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Wetland Bureau on their permit application. It came, contained probably uh, at least a dozen uh, bullet points that uh, were asked of Unitil. Uh, and they had to respond to them. The same way that the uh, zoning board has a certain criteria for before applications are granted. And they were pretty, it was pretty extensive. But one of the were two things that really struck me in those responses. One was the they asked Unitil if they had come up with any alternatives other than the fact of installing this, I will use a, the term of a 30-foot high picket fence, when <laughs> we run to reach that substation. And the response from Unitil was, well, the only other alternative that they came up with was stringing the wire in a coming from a different direction. But again, using poles and wires and so on. But this was the shortest uh, route, route to get to the substation. But one thing I thought that was missing there was I didn't see a response or even a question of Unitil about the possibility of putting the wires underground. I mean, here is the, you know, with this modern technology that we have now, I would think that along that three quarters of an hour stretch, it could have been possible to put the wires underground rather than the installation of the poles. Now, I know we have, uh, you know, uh, extremely high tides in that area sometime, and maybe it is impossible, but I would like to have seen in that report 
that type of response, that they looked into it and there wouldn't be engineering feasible, or wouldn't be uh, feasible to uh, engineer that type of project. I didn't see that. Uh, and also, one of the other questions was asked, well, what is the impact of the aesthetic interest <coughs> of the public by allowing this to move forward? And the response basically was, well, it's a public highway, and, you know, there isn't much, uh, there's no buildings on either side, and really the public wouldn't be affected by any type of uh, aesthetic impact. Well, I'm going to use, the, to me, there is an impact. Uh, I use the, I'm going to use the term, we talk about pollution. I use the term of visual pollution. To look, if you look at those pictures and you see that stretch of poles, to me that is not aesthetically positive. Any so, other points you want to make? Well, I'm, I'm going to wrap up now. So again, I know, you know it's, it's, it's happening now. There's, I'm sure there's no way of turning it around. But I guess maybe what I'm asking, and especially to Rusty as being a representative uh, for, of this board to the planning board, I'm sorry, Jim O'Dell, right, is the representative, <laughs> that as these things come up, uh, that you see have a, a, a real impact on the community as a whole. In other words, making uh, building a, a, a condo here, a, 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 a planning board plan to, to tear down a cottage or something else, there is not a, a major impact. But I think something like this that has a real major impact, Thank you. I would appreciate that that information be brought to the board so that maybe the public would have a little more awareness of this type of construction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comment? Public comment? Seeing none, um, we'll announce the board. Mr. Jim Waddell, Mr. Rusty Bridal, Mr. Fred Welch, Mary Louise Wilsley, and Mr. Uh, Phil Bean, and myself, Rick Griffin. Um, any announcements to community calendar? Rusty. Yeah, I have a couple of things. One, uh, just to let people know out there that we do have a number of openings on commissions, councils, and committees. Uh, we have a number of vacancies. We also have a number that are uh, uh, that are up this year and need to be do that. So if, if you have any interest to in being on, and I'll go down through them real quick, the Recycling and Education Committee, the Recreation Advisory Council, the Rockingham Planning Commission, Cable TV Advisory Committee, the Conservation Commission, Energy Committee, Hampton Beach Area Commission, Highway Safety Committee, the Library Trustees, the Lease Land Committee, or the Mosquito Control Commission, please contact the um, Town Manager's Office with your interest. Uh, like I say, there are a number of those that have vacancies, and there are a number of them that are up this year. And you don't have to necessarily have a ton of experience <coughs> looking for some new... Correct. If you want to just, if you, if you want to look at something to do with, for the town, if you want to get a little bit involved, that's one of the places that you can. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Wolseley. Notice from the Mosquito Commission, uh, which hopefully, uh, not that I'm looking forward to mosquitoes, but when it gets warmer, the Mosquito Control Program begins the week of April 6 in the town of Hampton. They'll be checking swamps, salt marshes, woodland pools, ditches, storm drains, and other shallow stagnant water for mosquito larvae. A truck-mounted sprayer will disperse um, chemicals along roadways. Road spraying may begin in June and continue into October. It's not possible to predict the schedule for road spraying in advance. If eastern equine encephalitis or West Nile virus is found in or near Hampton, then emergency spraying may be conducted. Emergency spray treatments may be conducted at Marston School, Hampton Junior High School, Center School, Winneconnet, Tuckfield, Eaton Park, Lewis Brown Park, and the High Street Cemetery. It's not possible to predict if emergency spraying will be necessary. Residents who do not want their <coughs> wetlands treated may use our no spray registry online at www.dragonmosquito.com slash no spray registry. So the weather will come, and we'd rather not be inundated with the mosquitoes. So I thank the uh, Mosquito Control Commission for giving us that information. Mr. Bean? No, sir. And Mr. No, sir. 
Moving on. Um, also, I don't have anything to contribute. Number three is the consent agenda. We have first uh, some veteran tax credits. We have some um, 2015 new veterans tax credits. We have entertainment license for CRs, the restaurant, and 401 Tavern. We have a library trustee alternate, Christopher Hendry. We have uh, to use the town office sign for the Winnicott class of 2015 Chem Free event fundraiser and a raffle permit for the Sacred Heart School. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Approval of minutes February 23rd. Mr. Chairman, since these are our non-public sealed minutes, I will move that we approve the minutes of February 23rd, March 2nd, March 16th, March 23rd. I'll second that. All those in favor? Unanimous. Moving on to appointments, Christy Pulliam, Finance Director. Good evening, Good evening. Christy. Good evening. All right, so um, I haven't been here since the end of January. We miss you. <laughs> um, so in front of you, you have February's reports. I figured I would just review those since they are the most recent. You did receive January's, and both January and February can be found on the website. They are both up there and have been up there for some time now. Uh, it's the second report of 2015, and the month's target is 16.67%. The month's total income was 610000 Of that total, mo motor vehicles came in at 186000 which is 35000 below the budget. The other major contributors, contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at 27700 State of New Hampshire Highway Subsidy at 53500 Water Pollution Grant at 50200 Departmental Income at 24900 Land rent at 167,600, franchise fees at 57,300, and real estate trust at 25,400. The expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department at the end of February for operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 16.6 percent of the budget, which is 17,000 lower than the month's target of 16.67. The majority of the departments are below the target level and don't have any major issues. Some of the smaller line items are over the year-to-date target because of the January slash quarterly effect where annual contracts or quarterly bills are booked during January. You know, some of the lines that are overspent is related to that. Uh, the 10600 spent in finance repairs and maintenance is for the annual support contract for the financial software package. In um, MIS, the four major the four equipment related accounts, when combined together, are currently at 23%, which is 5,000 over budget. Um, a lot of those are related to annual like licensing for the computers and software and stuff. So it's, a lot of them are paid at the beginning of the year. In personnel administration, the annual bank buyback program came in under budget at 145,000 which is 44000 below the budgeted amount. We haven't seen that for a while. It's been over in the last couple of years. In municipal insurance, the first semi-annual payment for workers' compensation insurance was made. Uh, the police department is at 13.5% overall with the open POs. Fire department is at 14.5% with open purchase orders. Other safety services, um, hydrants is a semi it has, we've made the semi-annual payment for that. We make two payments on hydrants. Highways and streets is over target at 19.77% um, spent. This is primarily due to snow and ice removal, cost being almost fully expended through the second month of the year. Some other accounts to note would be diesel fuel, vehicle maintenance, and heating fuel. And I'll just point out, um, even since these reports, the snow removal accounts, I just ran the report and it, I think it's on here, it's at 103 and it's already up to 333,000 from the 103 that's reported at the end of February. So 
Uh, a lot of bills came in in March for that. So that line item is um, overspent, as we all know. Municipal sanitation is running right at target if you do not include the annual purchase order for chemicals. Uh, some of the accounts in that section are over heating fuel and diesel fuel again. Uh, in maintenance of parks, the line item for heating fuel is at 54.88% already. Um, on page 15, I have listed all of the Warren articles that were passed at the town meeting, so you guys can see that. Uh, at the bottom of page 15 is the accounting for the 2014 encumbrances, showing that 11% have been expended to date. Um, when you get to the special revenue funds, fund 24, which is recreation, the beach sticker donations, year-to-date equal $3,410. And uh, Fund 25, which is the Cable Committee, has received its first quarterly payment of franchise fee revenue, and it was for $19,000. This amount exceeded the first two months of expenditures at $8,900. There wasn't much um, activity in private detail or EMS. It's kind of a slow time for them. So that is all that I had. Um, for the month of February. I can answer questions from February. I also brought down January's financial, so any questions that you guys might have? Okay, Mr. Bridal. So we're not seeing any savings in fuel like we were not so told by the Budget Committee? <laughs> it does not appear that way as of right now. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Wilson? Uh, Christy, thank you. A, a nice report. Um, thank you for the sample what you gave me for the um, wastewater system development charge. What I would appreciate, just two things, mm -hmm. if you will append this, just clip it with the ca with the cable committee and the recreation and oh, the EMS. Okay. I just want to make sure it was like the for it. And then if you would just get rid of the, um, for example, in March, uh, in February, you've got the $83,813.60. We just get rid of all the other. Uh, perfect. And then just fill it in month to month. Mm -hmm. That's great. $83,813.60 <coughs> so far in the sewer buy-in charge account, which we hope will build very nicely. Thank you so much for your help, and I appreciate your work on that. No problem. Mr. Bean? No questions. Thank you, Director. And Mr. Rodell. Christy, very good. Accept. Uh-oh. You're talking fast again. Oh, sorry. I've been here for a long time. Got to slow down. <laughs> practice. It's been a while. I'm trying, you know. It's, okay. But no, very good. A couple of questions I have is um, on the motor vehicles being under. Last year we were over all the time, weren't we? Um, I don't know if we were at the beginning of the year. We do tend to run over. Last year, at the beginning of the year, actually, I printed my. February report from last year, and we were actually uh, 48,000 below. Okay, all right. Our so target last February, so this year we're only 35. So I okay. think that should be okay. So that's not bad. And the buyback last year we were we were way over all the time, weren't we? And now we're. Yes, I believe reason? we had some retirements <coughs> uh, okay. in fire and police that affected that number. Okay, so that and does that number? Do you think that'll stay pretty stable during the year? Yes, that's a one-time thing. It's processed right. in January. All right, so, we'll so that was right. um, yeah. uh, Snow removal. Snow removal. Like I said, I, it has changed drastically from yeah. um, what we were reporting. And actually, I think Fred can correct me, but I think we just did a purchase order for another 233000 or somewhere in that range. For close. Some for all of the snow removal and cleanup at the beach for Jamco, which is our um, vendor that we have a contract with. We're so about $450,000 on the removal so far. Mm -hmm. So uh, do we have, I don't know if it's Christy I should be talking to, or Fred, do we, or that <laughs> stuff, that, that, somebody that talks slow. Uh, do we, anticipating that, that, that it's going to be a federal disaster on one storm? Fred's going to have something. Oh, you're going to talk about that, so we'll, yeah. so that's, you get off the hook on that one, huh? <laughs> All right, good. All right, Christy, good. Thank you. And anything else looks smooth? No, it, except for that uh, increase in diesel and fuel? Yep, I think so. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Christy. You're welcome. Thank you, Christy. You seem to, you do continue to do a good job, and uh, you're prettier than Mike, so. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. But Mike talks well. Yeah. I'm going to work on that. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, next, we have Ed Tinker and Mark Gerald. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> this uh, matter that we're here for tonight has to do with a case that 
involves two years uh, worth of um, tax abatement claims that are scheduled at the moment to be before the Board of Tax and Land Appeals on April 7th. And uh, there are, for each of those two years, uh, expert reports from the uh, OHI Asset Lender LLC, that's the 22 Tuck Road property, uh, which is a, a nursing facility of two buildings. And then there are uh, expert reports on our end. And um, not just those two years, however, once those two years are resolved, uh, unless another factor comes into play, the values carry forward into future years. So if, for instance, the Board of Tax and Land Appeals were to uh, give full uh, credence to the expert for the OHI asset lender for just the two years that are scheduled now, you would have an exposure of $75,521 plus interest. And then if those values were to carry forward into the future, you would have another $114,000 plus interest. So you would be very close to uh, $200,000 of exposure. Now, uh, we like to think our expert would, would prevail on, on that case. We feel the reports of our expert are very good. On the other hand, uh, we know that the Board of Tax and Land Appeals doesn't always go our way. And so the parties have been discussing a potential resolution, which uh, we have uh, run by you last week, which would involve refunds, uh, including interest for the two years 11 and 12 of only $30,000 and uh, $30,017.77. Uh, and what the resolution worked out as to the future three years thereafter is that the assessed value that we currently have would remain in place and therefore there would be no further payments for those. So what this settlement basically proposes is that we resolve our differences in the case for a payment of approximately $30,000 as opposed to uh, the risk of $200,000. And so this is a settlement that uh, we recommend. <coughs> Questions? Mr. Bridle? No, I think uh, they've done a good job at trying to negotiate this, and uh, I stick by with their recommendations. Mrs. Wesley? I appreciate the hard work that went into this excellent job. I'll be happy to move once the discussion is finished that we uh, accept the recommendation of the assessing officer and approve the settlement. I'll second that for administrative purposes. And Mr. Waddell? Yeah, um, good settlement. I like to see that, and I like to see. But I, I just, in appraisals, I guess, and assessments and stuff, I, I often wonder because my wife used to do appraisals too in commercial and, and residential. <coughs> Is there ever a time that you can just come together without going to litigation, or you can, without going to the, you know, the fact of, of disputing each other? I mean, is there any way of, of doing an appraisal that that's just that's the appraisal, that's what it should be, and we don't have to fight about it? Um, during the abatement time of year, like we're doing now, there are cases where we we deal with property owners directly, um, and, and, and as you see, we bring forward the recommendations. Once it gets to the appeal process, typically there's a disagreement or, you know, at least a disagreement on value. So it, it really makes it a lot harder once we get past the abatement process to easily settle things. Uh, it's typically a, a larger number and there's different opinions or valuation methods that come into play, comparables qualified sales, unqualified sales, there's a lot of factors. And is this typical of, of historically, it's always kind of been this way, and other towns go through? The some, some towns have, uh, of course, the larger communities like Concord, Nashua, I mean, they're, they're, they have, Manchester, they have hundreds of abatements and appeals, not hundreds of appeals, but abatements, several hundred some years. Mm -hmm that ultimately some are going to to, to get to this level where yeah it it's just I mean I'm just I mean you guys do a good job you did a good job getting the settlements you've done a good job on a couple of the other settlements but I just always wonder why can't we just kind of 
Can't everybody just get along? Well, for <laughs> like for example, for this, even in the abatement process, we were talking two million dollar difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't really easy to come to an agreement. Right. So, All right. Yeah. Take some time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What you do? Uh, it's very clear that a preponderance of the property owners in this community are very happy with what Mr. Kinker has assessed, and except for the utilities, which make us tear our hair, you have a very minor incident of abatement requests like that. We're doing very well. I, I, I wasn't criticizing you. You, you realize that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So if there were to be a motion, I would just I suggest, know. Mr. Chairman, that the motion would be to sign the settlement agreement as presented and already signed by the oh. other side. Excellent. Okay. And Mrs. Wolsey, is I that the motion you're making? Second that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Um, one before you leave, Ed, may I really quickly? Uh, would you just explain to the public the letter you sent out because you're commencing the reval now to the property owners for the commercial, industrial, and apartment properties? Might help to just let people know we're kicking off the process. Right. We're actually that will change to April seventh will be the date on the letter. We uh, pushed it a week because I wanted the board to get a copy and to see. Thank you. Um, yeah. So. It includes questionnaires to the income and uh, rental properties, not not owner occupied. Uh, it's if it's the property is being rented out or, or apartment buildings, that type of rentals. The letter will request some information as to rental rates, vacancies, things like that. So you're addressing the first segment in the reval process. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. Moving on, we have um, Carl. Nick Morin from Aquarian Water Company. And John Walsh. Good evening. Yes, I did not come along tonight. I brought John Walsh. Or Welcome. Vice President of Operations, thank you. And I'm going to let John lead off. Uh -oh. <laughs> thank you for having us uh, this evening. Uh, I think you have in front of you the handouts that yep. Carl had provided. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to walk through these handouts. Uh, and if you have any questions, I think feel free to ask at any time. Um, we're going to start with a discussion of the credit customers will see on each of their bills over the next three years. Uh, we received a tax credit, and um, we petitioned the Public Utilities Commission uh, to seek approval to pass that entire credit back to our customers. Uh, and the end result is a 4% um, credit on each of uh, each of the bills customers will see over the next three years, 2015, 16, and 17. Um, also shown on this uh, first page of the handout is our WICA surcharges. So WICA is the Water mm -hmm. uh, Infrastructure Conservation Adjustment, and these surcharges cover uh, some of our uh, the investments that uh, in some of our infrastructure, in particular. Uh, water main replacements. Uh, so you can see that in uh, April 2014, we had um, an wicking increase that was uh, 1.37. Uh, in January uh, for 2015, for projects completed in 2014, we had another 1.17 percent increase. Um, and then when you add in the tax credit, the cumulative effect of those three uh, rate changes <laughs> is a negative 1.46 percent, or 1.4 percent, 1.46 percent rate reduction. Uh, this next page on the handout talks about monthly billing. Uh, so most of our customers right now receive bills on a quarterly basis. Some of our bigger customers in our summer uh, seasonal customers get monthly bills, but most of our customers get quarterly bills. And we are switching to monthly bills in June. And there's a number of benefits uh, to it, I think, uh, to monthly billing. One of the most important ones is periodically we see customers who will have a leak in their internal plumbing with a toilet leak or an irrigation system leaking, and that will leak for a couple months. And then they'll get a big bill at the end of a quarter. With monthly billing, uh, leaks like that are picked up by the customer a lot quicker. Um, I think there's also value in improved water, improved water accounting for us. Uh, we measure uh, non-revenue water uh, in our system that's um, 
water that uh, is lost in the system through leakage and other um, uh, activities, hydrant usage. And with monthly meter reads, we can match up our production on a monthly basis with monthly meter reads. It isn't that easy a process when we just like get quarterly meter reads. Um, and there's also, if we want to look at different rate structures in the future, we have a, uh, the same rate for all water used. Right now, if we want to look at something like inclined block rates, it's good to have monthly uh, meter reads in place then because uh, customers get very, uh, they get a monthly signal on their water usage uh, rather than waiting a whole quarter. Uh, if they wait a whole quarter, then when you, you're doing a lot of irrigation, they can get hit with a big bill with inclining block rates. Uh, so you reduce that time to a month, they get a quicker, quicker indication of what their water bills are going to look like. Um, we've also got on this uh, handout a little bit about our e-billing. We have an e-billing system that customers can sign up for on our website or give our customer service center a call. Um, and the benefits, of course, are, you know, it's paperless billing, so less paper. You get your uh, bill electronically. You can pay it electronically. Um, I think with that, I will hand it to Cheryl. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get in too much into the, the details on these. Of course, if there are any questions you can you can ask, but I just want to speak to some of the highlights. Uh, just a simple bar chart that shows how our production stacked up last year in a month by month basis compared to uh, an average year. Um, and as you know, you know our uh, our mission is to meet the water needs uh, of this community, which means providing a safe reliable water supply to all the residents and all the businesses for their domestic and their uh, commercial uses. Um, it's quite a challenge uh, with all the pumps and wells and 130 miles of pipes that we have in the system, 9,000 services. You might think, well, you know, service outages might be fairly common, uh, but one of the things I want to emphasize is that it's very rare. Uh, one handout indicates that last year we only had eight events in total where people lost uh, water service, and they were all due to main breaks, where we had to shut down the main on the street to repair that. And uh, as you can see, the average interruption wasn't very long, a relatively small number of services that, uh, that were affected. Um, so the vast majority of our, our, our customers had no interruption water uh, service whatsoever. And the water quality is obviously important. The fact that every drop we produce has to meet safe drinking water standards, whether it's consumed uh, or not. Uh, but we collected almost 400 samples last year. We ran all sorts of tests on them, thousands of individual uh, parametric values, but basically all, all to ensure that uh, safe drinking water uh, standards are met. And, uh, and while we're on water quality, I really don't have a handout for this, but I just thought I'd comment uh, on the, uh, the subdivision out on Woodland Road. It was a topic uh, of last week's <coughs> meeting. I just wanted to clarify a few things specifically about the, the well specifications. Um, the wells will be very valuable assets for us as monitoring points for our uh, well protection programs. Um, in my opinion, there won't be a contamination risk to the, the aquifer because they're not just holes in the ground. They're going to be installed by modern, by our, our current state and industry standards. There'll actually be less of a risk to contamination to the aquifer than the, than the uh, natural overburden. Um, and each well, <coughs> for the be the property of our company, uh, will be secured under lock and key like all the other production and observation wells. And we'll also configure them such they won't be an undue obstacle to <coughs> snow removal or, or landscaping. Um, they'll, they'll be in service as long as the nearby production well uh, is in operation. And if they should ever be decommissioned, then that's a process that also follows state and, uh, and industry standards where it's just basically sealed off and buried so it's not a, a contamination risk. So. Um, these are some points that, that I realized after hearing the discussion last week. I really hadn't articulated exactly where all these things were, so I'll, I'll send a letter to the planning board so that um, that's all clear. Uh, and the other issue is the condition for no sob on that street, uh, which I expect the developer will probably go back and just ask if that language be um, synchronized with what the uh, aquifer protection zone ordinance says, which is reduced salt. Um, it gets to be a little bit of a challenge I could gather from some of the comments last week, like how is that actually 
sort of, you know, implemented and, and, and uh, kept track of. I think, <laughs> I, I think it illustrates some of the difficulties with trying to, um, you know, implement and force policies of this nature. Uh, in my opinion, I think it can be uh, clarified somewhat through better data and better communications. Uh, um, those two observation wells give us the opportunity to get more data on the, on the water quality in the aquifer. Uh, it gives us a better picture of, of what's going on. We can um, modify our, our monitoring program as, as we deem necessary to keep an eye on what, what the levels of sodium and chloride are uh, in the aquifer. And, um, so <clears throat> I think it's a matter of us understanding better and then communicating that better to the Public Works Department in particular. Uh, they're the guys that got to, you know, deal with minimize solve throughout the whole aquifer protection zone. So uh, I think I think the better information we can provide them, the easier their job is, is going to be in implementing that. Um, so that's that's uh, my clarifications on that that particular point. So I'm going to go back to the to the handout now. Um, just give us some information just to uh, summarize the activities that we perform as we operate and maintain the water system. Um, I gave a, a presentation to a chemistry class over when I got to high school last week, and I have this one figure, and people get to particularly think, well, the water falls from the sky, and then it just magically appears in my faucet, and <clears throat> it just does. But really, there's an awful lot of activity that uh, is involved for that to happen, and the summary I provided just tries to illustrate all the things that we do and sort of the intensity of the activities to, to provide water service to our, our community. And um, a big part of our job is also you know, maintaining all this infrastructure. We face the aging infrastructure issue that a lot of other industries, so to speak, you know, uh, <coughs> traffic, roads, uh, sewers, uh, stormwater. Um, a lot of that infrastructure is getting old and needs to be kept in good working condition if it's going to provide the services that we expect. And um, so we, uh, we do commit a lot to, to that effort. Um, if we don't, the rates of failures and breakdowns and just lost efficiency is just going to continue to build and it's going to impair <laughs> water service. Um, so there's a summary of what, what we accomplished last year um, with, with uh, itemization on, on the larger uh, projects. <coughs> and I have a sheet that also shows what this year's capital improvement plan looks like. Again, the, the majority of the emphasis is on the old pipe system. Uh, some of it's 100 years old. Some of the younger stuff's in not that great shape either. Uh, last year we replaced over half a mile of mains uh, here in Hampton. And uh, this year we've got another half a mile planned if the bids come in uh, close to our budget. Um, most of that's in Hampton. There's, there's uh, some in Rye. <coughs> and, um, we, we continue to, to improve our process uh, with uh, the work of our engineering department uh, in headquarters to find more effective ways of Reducing the cost, you know, prefer the main that we replace, uh, which then allows us to, to increase the, the amount of main that we do get to um, to replace. So, well, I'll pass it back to John to um, take it from there. Yeah, sure. One other thing that um, I wanted to mention is we recently announced uh, that we are for the second year sponsoring the Environmental uh, Champion Awards, and I think. Uh, Mr. Bean is familiar with those uh, from last year. <laughs> These awards go to outstanding volunteers um, that have helped improve and sustain the environment in New Hampshire. <laughs> and we give the awards to four different categories, uh, business, nonprofit, and adult categories. And each of those categories, uh, uh, each of the winners in those categories is able to name an environmental uh, nonprofit to receive $1,000 uh, grant from us, and then the student who wins gets a thousand dollars cash. Uh, we take nominations through May 6th, and the actual award ceremony is down um, at the beach um, pavilion. Is that what it's called? The seashell on June 27th. Yeah. And information on the Environmental Champions Awards can be found on our website. And with that, I'd gladly take any questions from you. <coughs> Mrs. Mosley? Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate seeing you come in quarterly. This has been a big help, I think, for the board. 
and the public as well. Uh, did you take pictures of the replacement of the line on 1A that you can put next to the uh, Italian workmen in 1907? <laughs> Well, I think, we, I think we got a couple of pictures on that. From, from an historical perspective, that might be a nice thing to see. Um, Carl, with regard to the Woodland Road project and the perimeter of the well, would you explain in a little more detail the, the, uh, what effect the well perimeters have and who sets them up? And what impact or not does that have on you? Do you expect the water to reach the 400-foot line and stop if it has contaminants in it? Well, I think as you mentioned last week, the 400-foot line is, in some sense, just a line on a map. You know, the water doesn't respect a political boundary or a, or a line on a map like that. Um, it's what's defined by the state is what's considered to be, you know, at least a minimum for what you control right around the immediate well, because obviously that's going to be the most immediate risk of, of contamination. But so there's nothing you have control over, and actually the planning board doesn't, I guess. But it's just an arbitrary. Well, it's a state standard. You know, it, it's a metric that the state has put out there. Um, right. But when stuff is flowing down to your well. Right, it's a good start. It's not I mean, a barrier. You've got to have some basic, basic control. The, um, I mean, the water moves underground. It can go for miles and, and miles, in, in uh, many cases, right, know, with uh, with groundwater. So, um, one of the reasons we have the aquifer protection district in town, um, it basically matches the uh, sand and gravel deposits that underlie Hampton <coughs> and Northampton and Rye and mm -hmm. Seabrook and you know, a lot of other towns. After the awful winter that we just put in, uh, I was wondering if there's a better system or a more effective system of hydrant marking when we get killed. We may never have a winter like that again, and I know that can be a problem, but is there any way to maybe give some thought to, I don't know, to hydrant marking? Yeah. Yeah, actually, we had the same discussion with Northampton, and uh, uh, we're looking at... Uh, at, at providing those uh, on all the hydrants in our system. Okay. And the other thing I appreciate that you gentlemen have done, I assume it's through you, is the um, water line insurance that I think it's safety valve yes. that puts through, and that's an excellent idea because I don't want to pay to have my front yard dug up if something happens. But thank you for all the infrastructure work that you've done over the years, and there's more to come. My final uh, question is this. We missed this year's planning on the west side of Ashworth Streets that still need water and sewer lines, I think, Fred? They do. Uh, are we coordinating between Aquarian and the Public Works Department to set up what we need to plan for? Because they didn't have a chance to plan for it in their budget. Well, if <coughs> we're going to be looking at what streets need to be done and how they need to be done. So. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, we're looking at not necessarily digging. Not necessarily what? We may be bursting the pipe instead of we're digging it up. Well, whichever. The lining. But water and sewer are still need to be done on some of those west of Ashworth streets. The, most right. all those streets need to be. Need to, there's right. four or five large streets out there to be done. So yeah. Public Works will be coordinating with Carl. To we'll see we'll what be we meeting. Do. We, we may not be digging them up. Is my point. We may oh. be we may be replacing them with liners <clears throat> in the actual current pipe. But that's just the sewer. That's just the sewer. The water would probably have to be dug up. I don't think you can or burst one of the two. Well, it depends on where the where the streets where the lines too shallow. Right. Back in the day when they didn't yeah. pay mm -hmm. as much attention. They are down quite shallow. There's yeah. No question about that. Yeah. I just don't want to see that neglected another year. If we need to complete that area, I would like to, to see the planning to get it. It's probably going to take several years to complete it because of the expense. Yeah, it'll be a year, yep. so that's good. Thank we'll, you. We'll be, uh, we do um, try and coordinate with Chris and, and the group of public works Great. on those. Thank you very much. Mr. Brian. I was glad to hear you say those, those the wells over there on uh, Woodland Road were going to be yours. I think our concern was that they were right in the middle of the roadway. 
and that there would be a comp. Do you have a problem with them being off the roadway? No, no, actually, we're proposing this far <laughs> off the road. Originally, it's right off the road. We're, we're right on the south side of the property line, so they're out of the way. So I think that was our biggest concern with them being polluted, was that they were in the roadway, yeah. and it might be ours, but it, as you said, they were yours. Uh, we were going to put them out. And I, and I was about, if, the, if, I, if that condition gets gets changed, so you have the option of putting them on private property. Okay. I was glad that you say you want to do all the residents of Hampton, so you haven't forgot the quest of 95 yet for, for water out there. <laughs> so, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Bean? Yes, thank you. <coughs> Gentlemen, good evening. Uh, your company's fascinating. You do uh, fabulous work, and uh, thank you for that important on uh, 86 Woodland. And uh, I know Jim is the uh, uh, liaison and member of the primary for the planning board, but uh, if we could integrate your input on those issues going forward, that would create a lot uh, less administrative burden and discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, excellent. It was concise. It would have been very helpful here a couple of weeks ago. And if we can get that earlier on in the planning process for the planning board, uh, it will eliminate a lot of questions. And I think uh, it is in sync with what uh, many on the board were, were thinking last week. Um, I'd love to get with you uh, offline and not take up time tonight on the camera on um, the exact origination and genesis of that almost million dollar tax credit where that comes from, uh, and then a review of what the rates would look like going forward um, for 2015 without that, and then what you're anticipating for what uh, rate next year, what, what you think that looks like. Uh, the water ballot uh, program is coming up. That's on the agenda later on. Right? I forgot to mention that. Thank well, you. Do you, you want to make the plug right now and then come back? Yeah, we're selling water wells again. Uh, same deal as last year, 75 hours. They're the recycled oil uh, well drums. You can paint them anything you want once you, you get it home. And the price is about half what they are uh, retail. And uh, this year, uh, orders can be uh, easily done online. Uh, it's through Sky Juice, which is the same uh, vendor we had last year. You can look them up directly, or there's a link on our website to it. So we're taking orders basically right until the day before Labor Day, or uh, Day weekend, and pickups will be the week after that. Thank you. Yeah, an exciting program. I've, I've purchased those in the past, and they, they really are beautiful, and, and they do make great gifts. And the um, really good ones are being painted by the kids over here at the Academy. Yeah. So yes, they are. Yeah, those they, are the ones you want. They do a nice course. job. Um, <coughs> And then going forward on the uh, awards for the uh, uh, environmental, what you mentioned first, uh, can it be, uh, uh, does it have to be a volunteer, or can it just be someone who's performing a function? Because I think our folks down at uh, uh, Wastewater Treatment and Public Works with what they do, could they be nominated? I've read the literature, but you said volunteer tonight. That's a good question. If you can get back to me on that, you can get back to me on that, those guys are on all, all of your water on the back end, and they do it flawlessly, and uh, yeah. they deserve more recognition. And thank you very much, gentlemen. Mr. Chen. Yeah. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Um, just quickly, on the monthly billing, have you run that by the public? Is there anybody that sees that as a negative, or do people see that as a positive? Do you want to speak to that? I think most people will view it as positive. There's always going to be a few people that just like the old way of doing it, and, you know, oh, and I got to write 12 checks a year instead of, you know, four, but uh, for the most part, we've gotten a lot. We actually got more criticisms for why we haven't done it sooner, um, yeah. more often than not. So I, I, don't know, I don't think you mentioned it. It'll, it's going to go live in June. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I know I had one in Massachusetts a while back, and I had an elderly client who didn't know that her toilet was yeah. leaking, oh, and it cost yeah. me one heck of a lot of money. Yeah. So I, I think from that aspect, I think that'll be good. And if people realize that, it's really good. And I, I think, appreciate your, your uh, comments on the Woodland Road thing. And do you find any area in town where the wells are affected by south on the road or affected by? Actually, I did check uh, our numbers. And uh, no surprise, our well that's closest to I-95 has the highest levels of, of sodium and, and chloride. Well, seven's about in the middle, actually, right now. That's the one out on near Woodland. Um, yeah. But it's. It, it's it's heightened my appreciation a little bit. We need to, to probably increase the frequency of our monitoring just to get a better idea what kind of trends are going on. Okay. But none that are in a danger level or anything? Or? No, actually, neither one of those uh, particular parameters, sodium chloride or, or regular as a, as a um, 
maximum contaminant. There's some secondary levels which are more based on aesthetics. And you know, in fact, some people have to worry about sodium in their diet. But there's not an immediate health effect resulting from either one. So there's not a direct uh, uh, regulatory limit on. Okay. And as far as, far as supply, water supply goes, I mean, in the near future, in the long range? Uh, we're in great shape right now. We've, with all the oh, vegetation yeah. we've got in the last few months, uh, and it's melting slow, which is what everybody was hoping for. So um, things are working normally, but I don't think it's going to be a problem this summer. Uh, uh, long term, well, that depends on what kind of growth we see here, um, and whether we expand you know, out past 95, as, as uh, Mr. Bridal indicated. So um, we try to integrate that into our planning and. And with the rain barrel <laughs> sales and stuff, I mean, how much does that save uh, and serve? It's really a negative amount in terms of volume. Okay. Um, but, but a little bit helps. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Good report. Yes. <clears throat> I would also like to thank you for what you said about 86 Woodland Road. But pretty much what you said is what you said at the planning board, too. Uh, I think it was very clear at the planning board, and it was clear tonight. Um, why, ex, why did you? I I did know, and I can't quite remember right now about the tax credit. I had read about it before. Why did you have the tax credit? The IRS changed their regulations uh, regarding how capital investment is handled, or some capital investments are handled, uh, and so it impacts uh, <coughs> private utilities. Uh, to my knowledge, I know mm -hmm. it impacts water utilities. So you had to return the money that you already received? Uh, it, well, it was a credit that we chose to uh, uh, calculate. Is, uh, I forget when it went into effect, but very soon after that regulation went into effect, uh, there was you were able to go back a number of years and um, recalculate your taxes effectively and get a credit for it. So we went back and recalculated. Mm -hmm. And it was determined that it's best to do it over a three-year period, and rather than just do it all at once, for the people, in case the people that paid it aren't going to be here anymore. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I know internally we made the decision to propose it, passing it back over three years. That question actually hasn't come up, at least to me, about what happens if people move out mm -hmm. um, in that time period. Um, but I know that we. We internally felt it was the right way to go, and then proposed it to the uh, to the PUC, and they approved it. Okay. That approach. Well, thank you. Thank you for your report. Yeah, you are. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the town manager's report, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <coughs> uh, individuals who qualify for veterans tax credit, veterans surviving spouse tax credit certain disabled veterans, and for those, there are a number of different categories, so we would expect that you probably would call, should call the uh, assessing department, because there are quite a number of different categories for that, but for disabled veterans. Uh, blind exemptions and elderly exemptions must apply to the assessing office for the, uh, on the forms that, will, that can be provided by the office by April 15th. Uh, so it's important that if you have or you, you know you think you're going to be able to apply for it, please get in there and do it now. It's very important. And please be able to announce that Christopher Jacobs uh, will be the new Director of Public Works, effective April 7, 2015. Chris is currently the Deputy Director. He is a licensed professional engineer, a land surveyor, a licensed land surveyor, and a li licensed septic system designer for the, in the state of New Hampshire. He's been professionally involved in private engineering firms in New Hampshire as a project engineer, a senior project engineer, a vice president, and a president of the corporations. He has more than 30 years' work experience in public and private sectors, including being the city engineer in the city of Summersworth, New Hampshire, and of course he's worked for us for a number of years at Hampton Public Works. I notified the selectmen on Thursday that the House Committee on Finance has attached an amendment to the state budget, <laughs> removing the funding to implement the state law requiring the photographing of individuals who do not have photo IDs at the polls. The amendment uh, removes all funding for the camera equipment and supplies to perform that requirement and places that total expense on the cities and towns. That was in the budget 100% and has been removed. So that may be a violation of uh, RS, uh, the uh, constitutional amendment 
on uh, not passing on those little state costs to the cities and towns. <laughs> I received a, uh, a communication today from Brian Wilson uh, from DREAD. Uh, they are going to delay implementing the uh, parking fees at the beach, uh, which are supposed to start April 1st. They will no longer, they will start now on Wednesday, April 15th, because the, the, it's currently a, a little snow down there that's uh, giving them some trouble. So they, gave, they decided they would give uh, some extra time to let that snow melt. <coughs> you all received an incident <coughs> bulletin the other day. <coughs> Uh, and these are just downshift costs that uh, are currently being considered by the relative committees in Concord. Um, the $15 million in additional revenue for rooms and meals that was promised the budget has been removed for cities and towns. Uh, the $7 million in state aid, uh, and this deals with waste wastewater treatment projects, including our grant, has been removed from the budget. Uh, the $8 million that was uh, additional funding for highway block grants that was predicated when they passed the increase in the, uh, what they call it, the toll road fee, which is the gasoline tax last year, uh, has also been removed, and we will not re be receiving that. Uh, also, $13.6 million in additional funding for bridge aid to cities and towns has been removed from the budget. Uh, the overdue portion of the disaster relief fund, that's, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, uh, which was $4.3 million, which is the state's portion of 12.5%, has been removed from the budget. Uh, and $1.2 million has been removed for flood control across New Hampshire. On the highway block grant, that's an additional 30, I'm going to say $36,000 in round figures every year uh, to the town or between now and 2033, that's $630,000 that we will not be receiving to repair our roads. Uh, there are a number of other things going on in Concord that uh, are kind of of interest, and that is they have passed a law uh, or amended a draft amendment to a, to a law that's being proposed in House Bill 2, which is the fiscal note, uh, and it's part of the, uh, the House budget uh, that would prohibit uh, the passing down, uh, and I'll read it. The state or any political subdivision of the state shall not provide any health insurance plan to its employees subject to excise tax or the high cost of uh, employer sponsored health coverage under the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act of 2009. That basically is the Cadillac tax. They're going to try to legislate in, in the House budget that. Uh, uh, we can't offer that type of coverage to any of our employees, which of course is unlawful. This is, um, well, as you mentioned, our upcoming mosquito. <coughs> um, we are in the process, uh, and we, we have it legal now for a draft, to letters to uh, all the residents on the numbered streets in Kings Highway yeah. to set up some meetings uh, regarding that material uh, and parking and other problems that they have down there. The final engineering uh, plans and, and, and uh, bid documents for uh, the engineering services and construction for wastewater for drainage on High Street and Lafayette Road was received today. It will re be reviewed tomorrow, and we expect it to be issued on April 1st for bidding. So hopefully that will go out the door on time. We have some good news from the state. We don't get much of that, so we'll, uh, we'll take it. Uh, the Ice Pond Dam. Uh, DES has told us that we do, and they're returning the permit fee of $2,000 that was filed by conservation because the dam is um, unregulated and does not need a permit from DES. It does need a wetlands permit, but it does not need a construction permit. Uh, Rusty mentioned uh, all the community appointments that are coming up, and, and I'll hold this aside because we need to plan on, on when you're going to get together for um, talking about Goals. Goals. Um, we have sent a letter out with regards to the award of the solid waste bids, and that has gone out to the vendor. Um, as it stands right now, we we believe we're at just a just a hair under four hundred and and uh, fifty thousand dollars in our costs for um, snow removal so far this year. That's substantially over the hundred and sixty-four thousand dollar budget. 
the board received today uh, this document, which is GASPI 45 compliance requirements. Uh, we're working with our auditors on that. Uh, that should remove the, um, and while there's 4.2, almost $4.3 million in expenses here, they're not the towns. They belong to the state. They, reg they, 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 they meet the requirements for retirements for our employees, which the state is obligated to meet. Oh. And last but not least, um, well, there's actually a couple more things. I, I wanted to mention just briefly, uh, we talked about Highland Avenue in, in public uh, comment tonight. Uh, Highland Avenue is actually part of Route 101. Mm -hmm. It's a compact road, and so is Church Street. We maintain them, but they are state highways. Mm -hmm. The telephone poles on 101 uh, are being set by the utility with a permit from the State Department of Public Works, or, or Department of Transportation, as they mm -hmm. call them today. Um, they should go no further than the poles were set today because uh, their application was to, and they got permission from conservation and planning <coughs> to do it, but it's against the law, to run the pole line down over the conservation property uh, in back of those houses in order to get to the substation. And the current stat statutory law says that the Conservation Commission or the town, select when a town meeting, cannot dispose of conservation property once acquired. There's no provision in the law for that. So they're stopped where they are until something happens with that statute or town meeting votes something different. Um, and I think the last thing I want to talk about tonight is that, <clears throat> and this is a draft that's uh, in review right now with legal, I'm sending a letter to the governor uh, with a copy to the president and to our congressional delegation and our state senator and state representatives dealing with uh, the president's notification that they have uh, declared a public emergency for January 26th through January 28th, 2015 for snowstorm. That's the first snowstorm. That virtually means that we're unable to recover any of those funds that was spent because that's just two days worth of plowing. That's not much. Um, we're asking that uh, in accordance with uh, the FEMA regulations that the, the governor and the president declare the period from January 26th to March 30th, because cleanups were just finished today, to be part of that disaster relief program, uh, as other states have done, which would allow us to, in fact, recover 75% uh, of the authorized funding from the federal government for those disaster periods. So that letter will go out of here tomorrow to uh, to the governor and to our <coughs> delegations. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, sir. Mr. Vidal? No, I think uh, I think it's good that you're on top of that. I know Massachusetts did a longer period for their, oh, yeah. their thing, so I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't do it. And uh, uh, we need all the help we can get here after we spent thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on snow removal this year. So thank you very much. Mrs. Wilson? Yeah, I read Mr. Nichols' uh, email, which related to that. Um, we certainly want to obtain all of the compensation that we possibly can for those terrible storms. Is our block grant to do Fairfield Ruth and Belmont at risk now? Because no, it's not. That's not at risk, but the additional money that was voted by the state, uh, approved by the voters, um, is at risk. The state has decided to confiscate that money instead of giving it to the city and towns as was promised. So in subsequent years, we won't be able to put in probably a block grant article well, like we did this year? Our current block grant is set. That's about $270,000, and we'll continue to receive that oh, money. We can draw down on we that. We just won't receive the additional $600,000 that we were promised. Okay. Well, that scared me when you said that. I'm not sure if you ever well, at out. least at this point. Now they, <coughs> now they're supposed to be able to take that block grant away because it's a provision of the Constitution. So we'll see how that works out and see how they can go with that. But they shouldn't be taking away the existing the existing six hundred and thirty thousand dollars that they want to take away. You mean somebody cares about the Constitution? That's nice. Um, <clears throat> on let's see. The shoulders of the road, and you and I spoke briefly about this the other day, the winter conditions have been so bad that the shoulders of the roads are breaking down, not just the roads themselves, and of course that contributes to the deterioration of the actual roadway itself. 
So I just, Fred and I had a brief discussion of that the other day, and maybe we can have a little discussion once we get into, uh, bless us, Public Works, um, working on the roadways, because there's been a lot of damage. And then with the melting, everything squashing and the mud is all over the place, and it's, it's been a mess. There have been shoulder and drainage issues, as well as the roads all breaking up. Um, you mentioned the, something about meeting with the residents in Kings Highway. I thought we were going to try to meet. Um, Bob Lab was supposed to get a, a message to you on the streets that the precinct commissioners want covered for our meetings on all the enforcement problems and so forth. That hasn't come through yet. He didn't come through yet? Because are we still going to send out a mailing to 1A? Yeah, yep. Um, you want me to call him in the morning and ask him to hurry up and get the information to you, or no? It's going to take a, it's going to take about another week for us to get everything done, so, so that we can schedule things up and see what we can get okay. done. Um, we certainly also want to send out uh, a request in that letter for people to send us information about their particular concerns on right. particular streets, right. so we have an idea before we meet with folks what's going on. Because I don't want to stall. I'd like to try to get that in place and get our discussion in place before the season really opens. Fortunately, it looks like it's sort of a late season uh, this year. And I think that's all I have for you at the moment, Mr. Welch. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, uh, Finance Director was in the GASB 45 uh, compliance. Uh, I would like to commend you for your selection. Uh, of the director uh, replacing me with Mike Mike's Fulcher, and she's, she's done a remarkable job. She has been. And she stepped job. up, and she uh, really is indicative of the deep bench and the deep talent of uh, many, many of our public employees here, and does uh, great leadership and nice job and very good selection. Thank you, and she's doing all the work. Well, yeah, she, she, she is, and uh, it's great yes. stuff. And that Gatsby, that Gatsby uh, stuff is really good stuff. Uh, Rainy Cushing has sent an email out to folks, and he's continuing the fight against Nextera. Mm -hmm. um, that, of course, uh, Nextera is a $15 billion corporation. You had just spoken uh, this evening about the state of New Hampshire, which, of course, like our town, is a corporation. Uh, that's a $5 billion corporation. Uh, BAE, uh, where uh, Director Rose used to be employed, uh, who uh, kind of s s blindsided us with this letter uh, to committee that uh, helped result in a defeat of about $1.2 million from next dollar in that tax dodge. Uh, they're a $24 billion corporation. Uh, we're hearing of more cuts and more cuts and more cuts. So I want to commend you uh, for going, <laughs> going to the bar sending the letter. Uh, it is the trickle up theory now with money. And we're taxed. This is a $200 million revenue camp for the state. And uh, we, we, we have to start looking uh, and following your lead on exactly what we're getting back for all of our taxes, uh, for all of our contributions, all of our infrastructure improvements that total $30 million. So I want to I thank you for keeping that uh, on the high burner and sending that letter out. I'd be interested in knowing um, uh, the response from our state legislative delegation. I'd be interested to know from our um, senators uh, what effort they're doing. So if we could uh, pursue that, and I know the chairman uh, would uh, um, like to uh, be involved in that in any way possible that he can. But they do represent us. That was a uh, hugely catastrophic uh, storm. It was very expensive. And uh, other communities, as in Massachusetts, are pursuing a much broader mm -hmm. uh, calendar day um, for that. Um, Mr. Nichols, uh, in his email to you, said that Governor Baker, just to the south, 10 miles to the south, is including a wider net yeah. to capture revenue for that. And we would suggest our, our state senators, our, our, our U.S. senators, our representatives, the governor, um, perhaps follow Massachusetts' lead on that. So thanks for that. And Representative Cushing is continuing that fight with, with Max Teller. Of course, we know we're under a, uh, a pilot program with that. It did cost the town $1.2 million. And uh, we look forward to that. And he is continuing that march this week in Concord. Thank you very much. Mr. Waddell. Yes, thank you. Uh, one thing, on the uh, photo ID thing, do we have any idea what that would cost if we had to do it? Are we, are we staying ahead of the game on that? Uh, we don't. We don't. Uh, the state hasn't released those figures yet. OK. Uh, there's obviously, it's got to get through the Senate. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm told it won't. Yeah. I'm hoping it won't. Yeah. Um, 
but we didn't provide for it in our budget, and yet we're going to, and thank God we don't have another election this year. Uh, if we did, we'd have to buy the equipment and have it available for that election. But we do have an election next spring, and we have, we have three elections next year. Uh, that equipment is not cheap, I understand. So it's going to be very expensive, and uh, I just have no idea where it's going to come from. Okay, good. Um, the other thing is that we all have to realize that the House has not even passed the budget, mm -hmm. um, that the Senate's <coughs> it's got to go to the Senate, that it's going to be a lot of changes in the budget, and I think we are, it's incumbent upon all, all of us to stay up to date on what's going on and to follow the budget process as it goes through and to work with our representatives and our senator to make sure that, that they are, I know, watching out for our interests, but to make sure that our interests are watched out for up there. Um, the other thing is, the other thing, High Street, you talked about the bids being in for the drainage. Was that, did that? They, they received the technical bids and okay. specifications were received today. Uh, they have been through three rounds of, of review. Okay. Uh, we will review the final changes that we asked to be made. We asked to have a portion of the town's purchasing policy included within the bid, so there won't be a question about what we're looking for. Okay. Um, that should be out of here by April 1st. We're going to review to make sure the information is correct that we had given them. As long as it's there, it's correct, it's already received legal review, and then they will be advertising or putting out the ad for publication on the 1st. Okay, and are we making sure that, that we're keeping the businesses in that area up to date on what's going on so that, I mean, because that's going to be an impact when it happens. And as I soon as we know, we'll be sending notices out to them and keeping them informed. Uh, we did put a provision in there that night work would be allowed till 9 o'clock at night. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We're trying to get this done before beach season or after beach season. So we have structured both within the bid requirement. Hopefully we'll get some good bids that will be within the appropriation limit and we'll be able to get the job done. Okay, that's, yeah, just want to make sure we keep those businesses informed because it is going to affect them for sure. Well, the other yeah. thing that's going to affect is traffic yeah, uh, because we're going to be on Route 1. Uh, we're looking to uh, get a hold of State DOT, uh, State, uh, State Department of Safety, uh, and the State Turnpikes. Uh, trying to get some signage up down south of Route 107 in Seabrook to tell the trailer trucks not to come through here during the construction phase because they're going to be twisting and turning through neighborhoods all over this section oh, yeah. of town, and that's just not going to be conducive 24 hours a day to uh, good. good rest for our residents. So yeah. we're going to try to prevent that. And the only other thing is I want to you know, agree with uh, Selectman Bean on following Massachusetts' lead. I, I, didn't think I'd ever say, let's follow Massachusetts, yeah. but <laughs> they seem to be ahead of us on this game. Well, there is an exemption in the FEMA regulations with regards to the President uh, does not have to accept the recommendation of the Governor. The President can, in fact, do what they did in <coughs> Massachusetts, and that's exactly what we're asking the Governor to do, to ask the President to do that. So we copied the President just so he would understand that we're asking okay. for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Thank you, um, sir. Is, now that it's all said and done since the storms, did the seacoast have more snow than the other areas of New Hampshire? It certainly does look that way. Everyone says that to me that comes to my yeah. business. They say, oh, my God, you've got more snow than we do. Everyone says that. I checked with my daughter who lives up in the center part of the state, and they <coughs> have a lot more snow than they have. Yeah. She lives in. 3,500 feet, so mm -hmm. they didn't get as much snow as we got here. Yeah, maybe you can emphasize that. No, no, yes. <laughs> We'd be happy to ship it to them if we could. Oh. <laughs> COD. Um, okay. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, sir. Moving on to um, new business. We have acceptance of donations to the Conservation Commission. And are you going to... I will, Mr. Chairman. This is uh, dealing with the rain barrel program. Uh, as you, this is, I think, our third or fourth year doing this program for yeah. conservation. Uh, the funds that are that are going to be uh, requested here for authorization to receive is six hundred dollars for the barrels, five hundred dollars for paint and primer, and twelve hundred dollars for clear coat. That's under the $10,000 limit with the statute, but it needs to be on the agenda. The board needs to discuss it. Um, in fact, you need to ask for public input, and um, we need, need to move forward if you approve this uh, by vote 
so that the Conservation Commission can accept these donations and proceed with the program. So you really need to get public input on the statute for this, if there's any public input. Can we do that now? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Mayor, may I read the letter from the Conservation yeah. Commission, Mr. Uh, 24 March 2015, uh, addressed to the Hampton Board of Selectmen from Jay Gaynor, Chairman, Hampton Conservation Commission, uh, subject donation acceptance by the Conservation Commission. Dear Selectman, the Hampton Conservation Commission's third painted rain barrel auction is tentatively scheduled for Saturday, 16 May. As in the previous two years, Hampton Academy art teacher Donna Boardman will be working with some of her students to create designs and to paint eight rain barrels for the auction. The rain barrel $75 each are being donated by the Aquarian Water Company. Wicked Awesome Paint and Wallpaper is donating approximately $500 worth of primer and paint for the rain barrels. And Wayne's Auto Body will provide a protective cloth coat to each barrel valued at approximately $1,200. We respectfully request the Board of Selectmen approve acceptance of these donations by the Conservation Commission. The funds generated by the rain barrel auction will support the Commission's green infrastructure program. I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion? Do we have anybody in the public that wants to speak? <coughs> I think they just did. Does anyone, would anyone else here tonight want to speak on this issue? Seeing none, any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Number two is appointment of a selectman's representative to SAU 90 Hampton School Facilities Committee. I'd be delighted to volunteer. Or, yeah, you are my eye. I mean, I've done some of it before, so being on the board past few years, but either way. Never. What? Mary Louise. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I'll abstain, Mr. Chairman. Oh, one abstention. Thank you. We'll work hard, I'm sure. Any other new business? <clears throat> um, just one thought for the board. And as we go forward, uh, because we've been struggling with this Woodland Road project and so forth, with planning, um, Fred and I were talking the other day about public roads, private roads, giving some time, a couple of years perhaps after a development is completed before it's designated a public road or a private road. <coughs> but in another sense, I think it makes it very difficult uh, if, if we are not considering whether the status is public or private <coughs> before everything is finalized because that might make a difference. So I just want to throw that thought out, perhaps future discussion, but there is a critical area here, I think, as to whether a road is designated public or private. And I'd like to go into that in depth with Fred a little bit when we have some time as a board. Sure. I'm just putting that on the table. <coughs> Any other new business? Moving on to old business. Number one is the Southeast Regional Refuge Disposal District Hampton Withdrawal Agreement. Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'll let Town Council start on this one, I guess, because he's worked his way to the table. Um, what you have before you is an agreement that uh, <clears throat> is for your signatures and follow up to the town meeting's vote in favor of our withdrawal. Uh, this actually followed up some earlier actions to the same effect. And uh, the reason this had not been presented to you earlier, actually, even though the district uh, was doing that, I was hoping we would uh, chase after it, was that we were not informed as to what the attorney's fees would be for the withdrawal. The uh, district has its own counsel, and they drafted an agreement, and uh, despite our requests over a number of months we were not given the figure, but now we have been. And it's a grand total of $634.25, which is not so bad. <laughs> and so uh, with that in mind, um, I had reviewed this uh, the document uh, thoroughly, and there have been some changes made to it since it was first proposed. I think this follows up on the, uh, on the uh, town meeting's vote uh, very well. So. Uh, we now have a different uh, place to take our trash, effective July 1. We don't need the district anymore, and uh, they'll need us more than we needed them. True. Uh, I'll also add to that, Mr. Chairman, that uh, since I'm the district rep, <coughs> what happened over the last couple of years is 
the district, uh, on my motion, made no refunds to the cities and towns for the overages and the budgets, and they had saved almost $60,000, which paid for all the bidding requirements and all the closing requirements and everything else that, uh, well, because the contracts for the district end on June 30th this year for everything. Good. So they had to go back out to bid, and part of that was our expense because we remember. Um, right now, they've got about $34,000 left, and about half of that is ours. So the $600 is nothing. We're going to get a huge refund check back on, on June 30th from the district in, in order to close out our account. <laughs> I want you to know we're going to get some money back for change. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Sorry, Barlow? Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. No, thank heaven we finally got to the end of it. Mr. Bean. Just a real quick one, and, and thank you. Uh, Section 4, indemnification. Do you see any uh, uh, potential liabilities um, going forward? I've questioned uh, the town manager on that fairly thoroughly, and uh, we think not. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Whitehouse. All set. Almost okay. forgot me, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do think uh, Mr. Welsh should be commended for keeping on the district in the yeah. last couple of years over various uh, ways of proceeding, which have not been according to Hoyle. Uh, yeah. And uh, Fred has really kept after them very well. So I think he needs. He should be commended for that. Hoyle had nothing to do with it, believe me. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Next, we have the JOP resolution. Um, did, we, did we vote on, vote on that? Oh, we, did, we do have to vote on that. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. And the agreement is in the file, and I would yeah. just uh, merely <coughs> be a motion to uh, sign the withdrawal agreement as uh, presented. So move. Second. The, Mr. Waddell made the motion, and Mrs. Wolseley seconded it. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, so next we have the JOP resolution. And uh, be before we start, I'm going to tell you, I brought this up at the um, Hampton Area Commission. And <coughs> Mike Hausman, and, you know, he's feels that everything has been resolved for this year, so I just want to set that out there for Mm -hmm. To let you know that. Okay. Would you like to open this up? That brightens up my entire evening. Um, the reason I put that on was for us to finally do something one way or another on this joint operations plan. So I have a motion prepared. <coughs> Pursuant to our authority under the 2015 JOP, page 7, Roman 12, I move that we give notice of cancellation without cause by means of a 30-day written notice dated 3-30-15, delivered to Dredd by certified mail. From 4-30-15 forward, Dredd and or its designees will be prohibited from disposing of state-generated solid wastes, recyclables, lobster traps, beach rakings, et al., at the Town of Hampton DPW facility. Is there a second? For discussion, I second that. And that is in the joint operations plan that was signed. And uh, if you look on page 7, you will see cancellation. This JOP may be canceled by either party at any time without cause upon 30-day written notice delivered by certified mail to the Tam Town of Hampton's Board of Selectmen and to the Dread Office of Director. Mr. Bridal. I think we still need to work at it. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Wolseley? Well, I'm proposing the motion because, you first of all... anything else to say? Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, we're sitting here complaining <laughs> about what the state isn't doing and what the state isn't doing, and I maintain, gentlemen, the, st the state is never going to do anything for the town and so we're going to have to take matters into our own hands and stop providing services for the state of New Hampshire that makes a lot of money. I think Mr. Bean has pointed that out with its endeavors at Hampton Beach. And we are getting diddly squat 
especially with some of the uh, things that Fred mentioned tonight, like lowering the rooms and meals, tax revenue, etc. And I have a another observation once you gentlemen are through con uh, commenting. Mr. Bean. Yes, so uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had provided a, uh, for uh, staff uh, response to Mr. Welch, and I know the department heads are working on that. Uh, in, in concert with this general thing that is addressed by the specific motion, and that is why I seconded it. And I'm not prepared to vote on it tonight because I think there's got to be an orderly process. It's got to be staffed by our department heads. There has to be liaison with the state. This is an important item. It's trash <coughs> and breach. Uh, and I, I support the, the spirit and the intent of the motion, but I am awaiting a department head response, response from the Hampton Beach Area Commission the Hampton Beach Chamber of Commerce because this is business owners and to unilaterally do that um, I think would place uh, a whole bunch of people at a disadvantage and it's very important and I don't think the state can be relied upon to have Plan B uh, bumped up immediately within 30 days. I, I don't have any confidence in their ability to do that. That would be detrimental to the town. It would be detrimental to beaches. It, it does. The motion simply um, is, is significant in itself, but it does raise the issue, and I'm looking for um, to f further look at state benefit of our services on state property, and I know Mr. Welch is, is bringing that forward with his department heads. He has tasked them with that. That is uh, a staff function, yeah. and upon receipt of that, I think it's a wider discussion. And uh, again, I seconded the, the, your motion. I believe in the spirit and the general intent, but I do not support voting on it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Waddell. Thank you. I do not support voting on it either. I think uh, Mr. Bean made some very good points. I think it would be detrimental to the beach this summer. I think it would be detrimental uh, to the businesses at the beach this summer. I think a lot of the trash that's collected on the east side is trash that comes out of businesses on the west side. People buy food and stuff and then go over there. So it, ju it just would not be productive. It would be counterproductive to do that, I believe. I believe we have to take into consideration uh, working with the state, I know that there's a lot going on in the budget right now that we don't like, but it, it, it has to be a cooperative uh, situation here where we try and work it out, and we cannot, and I'll stress what Mr. Bean said, we cannot put the businesses in there, down there, in jeopardy. I mean, there, there's what, they are what are supporting the town, they are what bring people down to the town, <laughs> and I think it's important that we take into consideration and work through this problem rather than making it worse. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I would just like to say that as a person that lives down there, I would definitely like to see uh, more cooperation. And I think between the state and the town and the town and the state, but <laughs> I just, I'm not out to be an adversary. T take an adversarial position with the state. I'm looking to work with them. I think it's very important. It's never been more important than now. So that's where I stand. Thank you. Rest, you got a comment? No, I... He already did. Okay, well, all right. Let me get back for a moment. This is still the old kick the can down the road. We've, we've discussed this. We've whined about it. It should give them time to hire a private hauler. I don't know what you're worried about with the businesses, the ones on the... Uh, east side, uh, let's see, west side, I guess, would get picked up by the town. Oh, oh, because they on, have state sidewalks, they picking them up, Fred? We share that responsibility. We share the responsibility, okay. Yeah, the state picks well, up the, uh... Yeah, well, I realize that that's a little quid pro quo. Well, quid pro quo. However, our public works department is, struck, is stressed to the breaking point at this time. We have tons of waste, we, and the state refuses to recycle adequately. We have tons of waste that are being processed through that transfer station and then being trucked in our rejection trailers up to be disposed of. Um, you're going to hate me for this, but I sort of anticipated the reaction, and I want to share something with you, and I don't usually do this. However, I want to express my sentiments a little more specifically so if you'll bear with me for about three minutes. 
Let's see here where we are. This is from uh, the walrus and the carpenter. Oh, oysters come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were cleaned neat and neat. And this was odd, because you know, they hadn't any feet. Four other oysters followed them, and yet another four, and thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more, all hopping through the froggy waves and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock, conveniently low, and all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and why the pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have our chat, for some of us are out of breath, and all of us are fat. No hurry, said the carpenter. They thanked him much for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but... Cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick, the carpenter said nothing but the butters spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears he sorted out those of the largest size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But the answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten every one. You see, the walrus and the carpenter are in Concord. And I'm tired of being one of the oysters. I feel like oysters Rockefeller myself. <laughs> but I, I, I don't want to hear any more whining about what the state's not doing for us. We are overwhelmed. We have a first and a second. Them at the beach, and I think it's outrageous. We have a first and a second. And all those in favor? What were you there? Would, would you, uh, given prior remarks, uh, be prepared to rescind your motion? No. Thank you. I will never rescind the motion, and I think it's a terrible disservice so to the community. all those in favor? One. And all those against? Four. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I can, mm -hmm. <coughs> this deals with the beach and the state. Um, we, keep a we keep try to keep a regular dialogue going on. But the state, the state did tell me the other day, and, and, and I think we'll all remember the fact that we had authorized the, uh, the state to uh, put dumpsters at the transfer station for their <coughs> beach rankings. Beach rankings. They're not going to do that. They're going to take care of it themselves off-site on state property uh, because of their contract limitations. So huh. we won't be seeing them at the transfer station taking care of that particular product at this point in time. <coughs> <coughs> Any other old business? I have two quick things. We, we are going to schedule the goals meeting soon. And number two, um, I think we ought to set up a system of bringing in our committees <coughs> at the time and spread it out through the year so we can review with them. I've been looking online. I don't see minutes posted for some. I don't see agendas posted. I think we need to give some more clear guidance to committees, and it should probably be done annually. I would like to see us work through perhaps a little refresher course 
for the committees because they are not independent entities and they are not elected officials. They are volunteers representing us, and I think we should schedule that on a, pri on a subsequent meeting and start bringing them in. Uh, any other um, old business? I would like um, also to know about the when are we going to have the goal meeting? When would you like it, Mr. Chairman? Ooh. We have a number of days that were suggested. Um, I thought we picked out one. <coughs> you did. It's supposed uh, to be tomorrow night. It was supposed to be tomorrow night, but nobody asked me, and I'm not available tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> when they did ask me, they already scheduled it, so that's why I get canceled. Uh, could I suggest next Tuesday night, the 7th at 7.15? Okay. When did you say? Uh, next Tuesday. April 7th at 7.15. Um, that would be a Tuesday. Does anyone have a problem with that? You don't have a problem? Whatever you say. Um, what I was thinking is Sir. when we have, and I'd like to see what the rest of the board thinks, <laughs> I think that before, I also feel that we have a need about the um, commissions mm -hmm. and committees. Maybe when we're doing the goals, we could talk about exact, about having what is our policy okay. mm -hmm. for the good. committees? That's and a good we, idea. We could do that at yep. the same time Absolutely. because I think there are people that are wanting to come in on their own anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll do that. You know, we'll have some something to work with. What about, I also wanted to mention about the old business, um, just to mention it to people that might not be aware, that at the beach, they did vote on having the new parking lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 69 to 6, I think, was the Correct. vote. Yep. And um, the other thing that passed was Uda's... Uh, oh, the wall. The wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to be thinking about doing it down at the church. Church oh, Street. Church Street uh, parking yeah. lot. Yeah, the Church Street parking lot. Mm -hmm. So that would be <laughs> a good spot for it. But um, did we... I know that you got a letter from somebody that had uh, a p possible parking um, situation that might be the town might be interested in. Oh, uh, did you Westport. Have, uh, Westport. We have uh, received an inquiry as to whether or not the town would be interested in buying a piece of property. Yes. Um, it's not on the market as of yet, but we were we were asked if we would be interested, and that's the Westport Motel. Um, What's the assessed value of that just for the... I haven't looked it up. I can tell you what, the list, what they want for the list price, but uh, mm -hmm. I haven't looked the assessed value up. Uh, I, I'm not sure it's going to meet the list price, but mm -hmm. um, obviously, since we were asked, this would be a dicker situation, uh, sort of a bargaining situation. Uh, the only problem is that there's no expenditure authorization for this. I did notice the other day that uh, they were talking about a... Um, a donation basis, and uh, I, I saw that uh, in Vermont they had made a, a, a movie for a million a million dollars, and, and now they're looking for a sequel, and they put out the call for um, donations for the sequel, and in 24 hours they had a million and a half dollars to build it, to do the two million dollar sequel. Uh, it would not be a bad idea if we put a call out to the citizens of the town uh, to donate for this. Uh, it's obvious that uh, some folks will, some folks will not. If we could raise the money that's required to purchase it, then we wouldn't need a special town meeting to do it. Good. Otherwise, we would need a special town meeting. And how big is that property? It's not very large. I'll picture the so assessment it's, cards. It's, is it two building lots? One. One. Yeah, one. So it's very one. small. It's small. It's a small one. Okay. Just curious. Um, okay. Now we're moving on to return to recessed public hearings of February 23rd for <coughs> Lot B for continuation should need arise. Need has not arisen, Mr. Chairman. So that's... <laughs> yes, there is, Mr. Chairman, the, the time for uh, replies to the written submissions that we've received already. Yeah. Each can respond to the others. Uh, by Wednesday of this week, right. and then thereafter the board would need to schedule a view when the snow is gone Good. to uh, properly uh, uh, assess the facts, facts of the situation. Right. So 
those are future events, uh, but Mr. Welch is quite right to put this on the agenda every week so that mm -hmm. uh, we can keep it in a, in a recess mode rather than an adjournment mode. Correct. Good. And speaking of recess, would, do we need to make a motion to go to continue our discussion? Yes, the board would need to move to return <coughs> and resume its non-public session that it voted to go into uh, at the 6.35 hour. Are we referencing adjourning in order to go into the session? Uh, you're uh, recessing your public session. So you're not adjourning, you're recessing. I make a motion to uh, recess the public hearing at uh, 2040 this evening and resume our Soon. previously recessed non-public. Yes. I'll second that. And I will just caution the board and the public to remember that the walrus and the carpenter live in Concord. Okay. So all those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Any closing comments? No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 u